I've been working at Beaverwater District for three and a half years and I started working here when I was a sophomore in college and my degree I was going through the biological and agricultural engineering program and I was lucky enough to get an internship here and I did that for the remainder of my bachelor's degree and then when I started a master's degree at the University in Environmental Engineering I was able to get a 20 hour a week position here so I'm a half-time employee and then I go to school the other half of the time. Well, being an environmental technician, our main responsibilities are environmental monitoring, source water protection planning, and ensuring water quality. So that goes to, you know, finished water quality, we kind of work with some disinfection byproduct studies that I'm working on right now. Then we also go out and we ensure source water quality. We have a, um, a boat that we take out quite often on the lake and we take water samples and at least once or twice a month we go around our whole watershed and take water samples that we bring back to the lab that get analyzed for all sorts of different things. There are actually three people in my, with my position, me and two other guys that are environmental technicians. And we also work real close with the lab technicians and then the manager of environmental quality, which is Dr. Morgan. I don't know if you guys have been with him yet or not. But we all we all really work together and you know it's we pitch in and help each other out a lot. Well, right now I'm getting to work. We have a new pilot plant that we're working on, and I've been able to be able to help get that started up. And that's really interesting because that's really what I went to school for, and all of my education in college has been, you know, in treating water and water quality and those sorts of things. So I've really enjoyed being able to work in the pilot plant. And when we did our uh, plant renovation in one of the old buildings that we weren't really using much anymore, we put in what they call a pilot plant, and that's just simply. It's a small scale version of the plant that you guys see out here and of what you saw with the water or the plant model. And instead of treating 120 million gallons a day, the pot plant's set up to do five gallons per minute. So it's a you know a small scale of our real plant, but we can actually put in the same chemicals and we go through all the exact same processes so we're able to see results from the pilot plant in a much quicker time than is if we tried to do something new in our big plant. So if we want to, you know, consider using different chemicals to, uh, to for coagulants or different chemicals for our disinfectants, we can try that in our pilot plant at a much cheaper cost before we try to implement it in our in the big plant. For my position, definitely you have to have a bachelor's degree in some sort of, you know, environmental science, biology, civil engineering, biological engineering, something, you know, in the that deals with the environment where you can get into that and you know a master's degree isn't required but it's preferred and you know it doesn't have to be a master's in engineering it can just be chemistry biology some something along those lines we are also just like the operators required to have our grade four distribution and treatment license and also as an environmental technician since we do take the boat out we're required to have our boaters certificate or certification we do a lot of a lot of the stuff we do for the source water protection we use what they call, it's a computer program called GIS and that stands for Geographic Information System and that is a, it's essentially kind of a mapping tool and we do it all on computers and we, you know, there's different entities around the state and around the nation that make different what we'd call a map layer and we can bring all this different information into one program and put it all together so I mean I could go out today and create a map or get layers is what we call it and to get you know soil types, the kind of land use that there is in Northwest Arkansas, it would plot out all of the you know where it's urbanized, where it's still rural or forested areas. And so that's one of the biggest things that we do is use GIS. That's different. Uh, you definitely have to have an, an interest in the environment and providing you know just kind of an interest in providing a service to people because that is what we do is provide a service to people. So. And you just gotta, you gotta have a love for the environment. And for me, it's a love for water. You know, when I was, um, when I was growing up, I was in Cub Scouts and we did a um, water cleanup on the west, or the middle fork, I think, of the White River. And um, that was kind of my first experience. And I really didn't think about it much until I got into college and then met our CEO here when he came and talked to our student groups. And that's really whenever I kind of, you know, kind of fell into the environmental or the water treatment field. You know, talk a little bit about the pilot plant. That's what I've been working on for the last several months, or the last couple months. And what we're doing is we're trying to make sure that our pilot plant, since we just started it up, we're trying to make sure that it mimics what we actually have going on in our actual plant out here. Make sure we get the same 
TLC removal, which is total organic carbon. We want to make sure we have the same pH at different stages in the process. And what we are going to do, the first thing we're going to be doing with that pilot plant is trying alternatives to get rid of disinfection byproducts or as high levels of disinfection byproducts. A disinfection byproduct is a product that's formed from the disinfectant when the disinfectant and the organic matter in the water combine. And according to EPA, they are, you know, they can cause cancer. So that is a rate, something that's regulated. And we just have to make sure we keep our numbers under the regulation. When I got into college, you know, I took a lot of these classes that dealt with water, and water is just such an interesting, I don't, I don't guess you, I don't know what you call it, a chemical or a liquid. It's just such an interesting thing to me because, it, you know, we do so many things with it, and it's something that we really take for granted a lot. So I don't really know how I developed that interest in it, but it just happened, and I can't imagine doing anything else. One of the most important things, if you think you might be one day wanting to do a job in the water industry is, and you know the part that I do is chemistry and math. I've, and especially engineering school at the university, you have to really love math and love science because that's about the only thing they make you take up there. I mean, we've already seen problems around the United States where they're having water shortages and people are fighting over, you know, going to court over who gets to use the water. And so, you know, as you know, the, we keep having water depletion. It's just going to be we're going to have to find new sources of drinking water and employ new technologies to you know, provide safe drinking water to customers. Instead of you know, just focus on treating water from Beaver Lake, we want to make sure that the water in Beaver Lake is of good quality and there's a lot of things that you can do as far as you know, being a good steward of the land to promote good water quality in Beaver Lake, which makes it even easier for us to provide good drinking water at your house.